Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the 007 No Time to Die poster in Photoshop. I have included in the description of this video a link to all the assets that you need to follow along and do the project with me. So go ahead, pause the video and download those. Also, in the course of this tutorial, I do use three of my grunge textures from the Nuclei Grunge Pack. I have included a link to the full pack, which you can purchase. Otherwise, the three that I use are included in the free assets. With all that said, let's get started. All right, first, let's take a look at the poster. We've got a background that's made up of two grunge layers uh, that are colorized. We have a gold one and a blue one. Then we have our character. We have the titling on top of that, and then we have our release date here. And we have kind of some dark gradients coming up here. And we have this accented lighting on her face. And those, I would say, are the primary elements of the poster. And we're gonna go ahead and recreate this in Photoshop using some images of our own. So let's go ahead and close this. And we're gonna go to File, new and we want to create a document uh, that's 2000 wide on pixels 3000 high and we want the resolution to be 72 and the rest should be fine let's hit create the first thing i want to do is create the gold background now i'm going to use one of my grunge layers for this and i've put my entire grunge pack into a library so i can easily access it but I have included in the assets to this tutorial the specific grunges that I use. And the first one is gonna be Nuclei Grunge 19. So let's go ahead and just lay that in here. And I'm going to scale it up to be the size of my canvas here, like so. And then next, I'm also gonna use one more grunge, this Nuclei Grunge 34, and just kind of layer that on top as well. Let's go ahead and make that the right size. And this I'm gonna put on overlay and that's just gonna add a little more texture to it. That's a little much. I primarily want just a few spots here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a mask to it, go onto my gradient tool, make sure I'm on foreground to transparent, and then go on the middle gradient and just kind of go out from the center like this and then maybe a little bit there. So it's primarily just adding some texture there. Maybe um, I'm going to switch to white for my foreground color and just add a little bit more here. So something like that looks pretty good. Next we're going to give it its color. So let's go down here to gradient map and we're going to make a gold gradient map. So our first color here is going to be kind of a dark brownish color. So that's 261D1D. Then we're going to add a color to the middle here. And that is going to be 725A3D. And then finally, our light color is going to be f 5 B66A. So let's hit OK there. And we have our basic background color in place. That looks pretty good. All right, the next thing we're going to do is just add a bit of a dark gradient to the bottom. So let's call this bottom gradient. And I'm going to go back onto my gradient tool, make sure my foreground color is black and it's going from black to transparent. And then I'm just going to kind of go from the bottom to about three quarters of the way up. I'm gonna put that on 50%, maybe maybe 65%. That looks pretty nice. All right, next, I wanna bring in the 007 here. So let's go File, Place Embedded, and in the assets, you're gonna see an 07 white. Let's just go ahead and place that. We're gonna make this significantly bigger, like so. And if I hold down Option, I can drag and place this anchor point here. And then when I hold down Option and scale from that point, it will just scale it right from there. And I want it about that big. 
So let's hit OK. Let's just move it up so that this is lined up with the top there. And I think that looks good. All right, let's go back to our library here, or you can go to the assets, and you're going to see Nucle Grunge 18. Let's go ahead and place that. I'm just going to make it as big as the file. And then I'm going to clip it to this layer by holding down Option and clicking between the two layers. Now you can see that that is just on the 007. Let's add another gradient map. And again, I'm going to clip this by holding Option and clicking there. And for this one, we're going to make it a blue color. So the dark blue is going to be 52933. Oops. This is where I want to paste that. OK, and then our mid blue color is going to be, let's see here, 206176. And then finally, our light blue color is going to be A3DBE7. So that needs to be there. Oh, OK, we had an extra black one. So that looks pretty good. I think it looks just a little too saturated. So what I'm going to do is just bring my light here a little toward the left so that it's applying more to this image, like so. And then what I might do also is just add a little bit of white to this top corner. So. I'm putting this under the gradient map. I may move it, but for now I just want it there. I want to make sure I'm black and white here, which you can do by hitting the D button. That's going to default your colors to black and white. And then you can hit X to switch which one is your foreground color and which one is your background color. So I want white to be my foreground color and I want a radial blur and I'm just going to go like this. So I think that's going to look better above. So let's put it above and let's put it on soft light. And let's take the opacity down a bit. So something about there looks pretty good. All right, the next thing we're going to do is add some guides to this image. Um, they're just going to help when we start doing the titling and adding our person in here to make sure we're putting stuff where we want it. So let's go view new guide layout and for this we're going to do two columns four rows for our top margin we're going to do 152 for our left margin we're going to do 380 for our bottom margin we're going to do 140 and then for the right we're also going to do 380 so let's hit OK. All right, next we're going to go to File, Open, and I have a DNG file here. So let's go ahead and open that. And I've already made basic corrections to this. So I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to click here, make sure it's opening how I want it to. That looks fine. And let's click Open. All right, so this is our file. We now need to cut him out of the background. So let's go ahead and just crop it first. And to do that, I'm just going to drag these. I don't want this fixed ratio, so I'm just going to go reset crop and then start dragging in the corners and sides so that we kind of just have the gray background that's going to make it a little bit easier for Photoshop's automatic selection tools. So just like that looks pretty good. And then I know from having tested this, if I go onto my quick selection tool and hit select subject, it does an OK job, but it doesn't do a very good job around these hands. Um, you can see it's missed that element, missed this. It's kind of going into the gun in a few places. Um, but it does a really good job everywhere else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Q to get it out of Quick Mask, drop my selection with Command D, and then I'm going to use the Pen tool to just select around this arm, and then I'll use the Quick Selection for the rest. So let's go onto our Pen tool, make sure it's on Path, not Shape, and we're just going to start drawing a path around this arm and the gun, and that's going to give us the most accurate selection. 
So to start making a path, you're going to click. That's going to add an anchor point. And the next place you clip it, uh, click is going to create a line from there to your next point. So there you can see a straight line. Now I haven't let go of the mouse. If I start dragging the mouse after I've clicked, you can see I can control the curve of that line. So these handles, which is what these are called, they influence the curve of the line. And you can almost imagine it as um, like a little stick with a rubber band attached to it. And the other end of the rubber band is in the middle of the curve that you just created. So the further I pull this stick, just imagine a rubber band in the middle to there. It's kind of a, a good way to figure out how that curve is going to work. Now, if you've made a line and you want to cut it off, you can just click there, holding down Option, and it's going to cut that line off. And if you want to adjust after the fact, hold down Command, and then you can go and move these anchor points around. And this is why I really like using paths, um, as opposed to like the lasso, is I have that control of being able to go back after and make adjustments to it before it's committed. All right, so for the rest of this, I'm going to kind of fast forward through now that you know the basics of the pen tool. Really, the rest of this is just going around the entire thing and making a path. So we'll just kind of fast forward through this. One other piece of advice on when you're doing a pen selection, try not to be too zoomed in. I'm way too zoomed in here. And the problem with being this zoomed in is you tend to overcompensate the accuracy of the selection. OK, so that's enough. Um, now I'm just going to kind of make this wide and then save the path. So here we'll call this arm and gun. And if you don't save the path, it's going to keep it as your work path. And then the next path you do is going to overwrite it. So if you've ever spent a lot of time making a path, Make sure you go in here and name it, and naming it will save it. OK, so next, let's go ahead and deactivate that. And then on our layer here, we can go on the Quick Selection tool and click on Select Subject. I'm going to go into Select and Mask. We'll do any cleanup here, so maybe a little bit here on the ear. And right here. And then I'm going to just go around the edge, make sure it didn't miss anything that's important. I'm not going to worry so much about this arm because I already know I've made that selection manually. So that looks really good. Let's go ahead and add some smart radius, three pixels, usually enough. And let's hit OK. All right, so now I have my selection made, but I want to add this path to the selection. So how do we do that? Well, the quickest way is to add a quick mask. So you can do that by clicking here or hitting Q on your keyboard. So now we're in quick mask mode, meaning I can paint or erase elements of my selection by painting white and black. So here I can now hold down Command, make a selection out of my path, and I want to fill this with white. So white is my foreground color. I can do Option, Delete. And that's all to backspace on a PC. So there you go. Now I know everything in my path is selected. What I can do now is inverse my selection and then go with a black brush. I'll just go to a general brush here like this. I can control this by holding Control and Option, dragging left and right, up and down. I want to brush with a lot of hardness. And then with black, I can just paint outside here. So anything that it over selected. Now I want to make sure I don't go down here. So I don't want to go anywhere past the selection here. Just like that. And then I can do Command D to drop the selection or here deselect. And then hit Q again. And now I have a nice clean selection. I can add a mask to this and then right mouse click and say convert to smart object. And we'll call this character. All right, and then if I just drag this a little bit to the side here, I can drag this into my scene like so. 
And I wanna kind of place him about here. And then I'm gonna do Command T for transform, move my anchor point to right about that center anchor point there. And then I'm gonna scale this down until his shoulder is kind of at the bottom of this guideline here. And then we'll hit OK. All right, next I wanna add a little bit of a gradation to the bottom of the character. So we'll add that, we'll call this bottom gradient. And again, I wanna clip it so it's only affecting our character layer like this. I'm gonna go G for gradients, make sure I'm on linear and then change my foreground color to black. Start from the bottom and go to about the bottom of his chin there. And then we'll take the opacity down on that to about 65%. That looks nice. Okay, and then I wanna add a little bit of a color grade to him, make him match up with our background a little more. For this, I don't need the guides. They're kind of getting in the way. So we're just gonna go to extras here H and turn those off. All right, then we're gonna add a curves layer. Oops, add a curves layer. Make sure that's clipped just to our character here. And I'm gonna go into the blue, pull down the bottom of the blue here. So we're getting a little more gold in his face and then just pick it up toward the bottom so it stays blue in the darker areas like that. And then for red, we're gonna do kind of the opposite. So in the shadows, I wanna bring it down. So we add that cyan color into the shadows, but I don't want too much color out of his face. So in the highlights, we'll just pull that back up a tiny bit like so. And then the other thing I wanna do is add kind of some harsh white highlights just to the face. So to do that, I'm gonna make a copy of our character layer I'm gonna just hold down option and drag that to the top. And then I'm gonna to go to image adjustments, black and white. And this is kind of a neat trick to give you some white highlights. So here, I basically wanna reduce all these colors until I just have a little bit of white highlight of the face. So just those colors right there. And then we're gonna take everything else down, down toward black. So right about there, let's hit okay. And then after the black and white, I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer and just make those whites more white. So by dragging the white up here and then make the darks a little darker. So something like this, I don't want that super strong one there. So we'll come back just a little bit to about there. And then we're gonna put this on screen. And if I double click here, I can adjust the blend if under the blending options. And I want the bottom layer, or sorry, I want it to blend only in the highlight area. So if I take this down, you'll notice that those white highlights are coming out of his jacket and the gun, but they're still staying in his face where I want them. So to right about there, and to make sure that this isn't clipped, we're gonna hold down option and just spread these two points apart. So something like that. So now if I turn this on and off, you can see it's primarily adding those highlights to his face. There's still some on the jacket, and to fix that, I'm gonna add a mask, but I'm gonna hold down Option. So that's gonna hide everything, and then I can go G for gradient, make sure I'm on radial, make sure my foreground color is white, and then just drag away from his face like that. There you can see it's just adding that nice highlight to his face there. All right, next we're gonna add a shadow. So let's go ahead and Right below the character layer, we're gonna add a shadow. We're gonna call this character shadow. I'm gonna hold down command and click on the layer thumbnail. That's gonna select the transparency of the layer. And then to fill with my foreground color, which is black, I'm gonna do option delete on a PC that's alt backspace. Then I'm gonna drop my selection, which is command D, and then just drag it this kind of down and to the left to about there. And then we're gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and set this to, let's say 55, okay? And then I'm gonna take the opacity down on that to also 55. 
Okay, so that's most of our elements in place. I do feel like there needs to be a slightly stronger uh, dark gradient to, on the bottom here. So I'm gonna take this bottom gradient and just up the opacity to 75%. I think that looks good. And then finally, we want to add the title. So let's go ahead and turn our guides back on. That's Command H. And the first one we'll do is the big one, the No Time to Die. Um, the font here is Futura Black. If you don't have that, you can search Google for another uh, stencil font that's, that's similar. And I'll try to include in the description of this video a similar font. But the actual poster font is Futura Black. So let's go ahead and select that. That's Futura Black right there. We're gonna make this really big. So for this, we're actually gonna go all the way to 442. And in our character palette here, I'm gonna change the letting to 345. And I want the tracking to be 30. I want it to be all caps. And in the paragraph, I want it to be left aligned. So let's start there. And when I start, I want it to be white. So I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is white. And then we're gonna go no time to die. And let's go ahead and line this up to this corner right here. So top left corner like so. And we're gonna actually make this just a bit smaller. Let's try 420 or maybe 415. Uh, I think even a little smaller, maybe 400. Yep, 400 looks good. Okay, so 400 like that. And then what we wanna do here is we want to line up a few of these elements. So the two should be lined up with the eye of time, like so. And then the D of die needs to be lined up with the O like this. And we're gonna pull these in just a little bit. And for this, what I'm doing is going between the letters, holding down option, and that's gonna adjust the tracking here. Um, and then to adjust the paragraph letting, select all of it and then hold option and go up and down. And you can see just that's the arrow key, up and down arrow, that's gonna adjust this. So that'll adjust the space there. Um, we don't need to adjust that, but that's how you do it. And then to adjust the font size, select all, hold down shift command, and then do the um, comma and period buttons. Okay, so there's the no time to die. Then we need the 007 in gold right here and the date down here. Let's go ahead and do the date first. So I'm gonna go deselect the layers. That way when I go onto my type tool and make adjustments here, it's not gonna adjust it to my text. So I'm gonna do future or medium. And here we'll do 72 points. And for the color, I'm gonna use a kind of a muted gold color like this. So say okay. And then I'm just gonna start typing right here. I do want this to be centered like this. And we'll type in, uh, well, it's May, well, let's say June, 2021. It's just like that. And then we wanna add the 007 logo here. So let's go ahead, file, place embedded, and we'll just grab this white one here again, make it a little bit bigger, and just kind of center that with the two, and then right align it with this guide here. Um, I already have this now as my foreground color, so if I just add a color overlay here, and then select this color. I'll have that as the same color. Let's go ahead, turn off our guides. 
So there you have it. That's how you recreate the 007 No Time to Die poster in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video, do all that fun stuff that you do for the content creators that you enjoy. Also, again, if you want to get my full grunge pack, I have included a link to that in the description of this video. Hopefully this gave you just a small idea of what you can do with grunge textures in Photoshop. All right, here's some other videos that you can check out and I will see you next time.